In this video, we're going to learn how to construct perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. So for the first one here, we're going to look at bisecting segment EF. Now notice it doesn't say to construct the perpendicular bisector, but in order to bisect a segment, what we really have to do is construct the perpendicular bisector. So even though it says just to bisect, we're going to use the perpendicular bisector construction. So basically anytime you're bisecting, you're going to always go through the middle of the segment. But in, when we're doing constructions, we're also going to force it to be perpendicular just because that's how we do the construction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my compass and I'm going to put the metal point on one of the endpoints of the segment. So I'm going to place it on point E. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the opening of my compass so that it's more than halfway. Um, and you'll see why. If I don't go more than halfway, then what's going to happen is you're not going to have arcs that cross. Um, but other than that, it doesn't really matter as long as you're somewhere more than halfway between. So you kind of approximate where you think the opening should go. So it doesn't have to be exact. Somewhere uh, more than halfway and then before point F. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arc up and down. And then I'm going to take my compass, and the most important part here is that your opening stays exactly the same. So that's why it didn't matter originally how far open your compass was, um, as long as you were more than halfway so that you can see this intersection. The second part is you have to keep that distance the same, because if you remember, the definition of a perpendicular bisector is a set of all points equidistant from two endpoints. So by opening my compass and then copying that distance on the other endpoint, I'm representing all points equidistant from both endpoints because I use the same distance from those endpoints. So the points that are equidistant from both endpoints would be these two points right here. They're the same distance because they're the intersection of the two arcs that are the same distance away from E and F. So those points represent the points that are equidistant from E and F which means the line that passes through those points is going to be the perpendicular bisector because the line that passes through those points is now equidistant from points E and F. So this line here, let me get arrows on it, is the perpendicular bisector. But what this is asking for is to bisect EF, which I did, and then label the midpoint. So this point right here is going to be the midpoint. That's the intersection, which means the distances right here are equal. Those segments are equal. And then remember, because it's a perpendicular bisector, I really have four right angles as well. So let's try a couple others. So example two, we're basically going to do the perpendicular bisector um, on each side of the triangle. So again, it says to bisect each side of the triangle, but we're going to use the perpendicular bisector to do the construction. So use perpendicular bisector. So that means I'm going to do each side of the triangle. So focus on one side at a time. So let's focus on the one that's down at the bottom here. So you're going to take your compass, you're going to use your endpoints of the segment or of the side of the triangle. So Here's my endpoint, and then I'm going to adjust my compass so that it's more than halfway. So remember, just approximately, make sure it's more than halfway. Worst case scenario, you make your opening too small, and then what will happen is you won't see the intersection between those arcs, so that just means you have to adjust it. So that's why you want to go more than halfway so that they actually do intersect. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my arcs, and then I'm going to move the compass to the other endpoint, keeping that distance the same. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to go ahead and draw my arcs. So now where those arcs intersect represents two points that are the same distance away from those endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect those. So this might be a good um, time to use your colored pencils and switch out the pencil in your compass so that, because you're going to see that this picture is going to get pretty crowded looking. So I'm going to kind of color code mine. So there's the first perpendicular bisector. Now I want to find the other two sides. 
So it might help if you turn your paper sideways so that if I'm focusing on this segment, it's on the bottom. Um, you don't have to, but you can. So here's my end point. Need to adjust my compass so it's more than halfway. So about in there looks good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my arcs. Keeping that opening the same, I'm going equidistant from this end point. So the same distance away is how I'm going to get that bisector. So here's my perpendicular bisector because I'm equidistant. The intersection points are equidistant from those endpoints. So go ahead and connect these. And remember, these are lines, so they do go on forever. So you can extend them out. And when I'm done, I'm going to put arrows on all of them. I just want to make that the same color. And then for the last side, this side right here, I'm going to go ahead, take my compass, adjust it so it's more than halfway. Again, I'm using a different color here just because, like, like I said, the picture gets really crazy. So keeping my compass the same opening, going equidistant from this other endpoint is how I'm going to get the perpendicular bisector because all points on the perpendicular bisector are equidistant from the endpoints. So here is the perpendicular bisector passing through. And if you notice, these points all intersect at a common point. So that's something um, we'll discuss later on, but they do. So the perpendicular bisectors all will intersect at a common point. Um, and then let me go ahead and just add arrows on here because perpendicular bisectors are typically lines. They don't have to be lines, but usually they're lines that go on forever. So that's what we're looking at. So they all intersect at a common point, but really what it's asking for is just the perpendicular bisector of each side, or the bis to bisect each side, which right here is where we're cutting each side into equal parts, wherever that perpendicular bisector passes through. That's how you're getting the sides that are bisected. So on the next page, we're going to look at how do you bisect an angle. So to bisect a segment, you're always going to use the perpendicular bisector. And then on the next page, to bisect an angle, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to kind of do the same idea where you're going to go equidistant. But if you think about if you're bisecting an angle, you really need to be equidistant from all the points on the sides. So what's going to happen is in order to figure out how to make it so that you're equidistant from the sides, we have to pick a point on the sides or the rays, the rays of the angle. But we have to make sure that we're consistent. We're picking the same point from both rays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass. I'm going to place the point on Y, and I'm going to open it. Now, the opening doesn't really matter. You can pick. I wouldn't go so small that it's a pain to do, and I also wouldn't go so large that it's then not out of the angle. So usually I kind of go like in the middle. It doesn't really matter, not an exact science. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw an arc. By drawing this arc, it's telling me which points to now measure from, which points I should go equidistant from on the two rays. So we have to do this first arc so that we know where to measure from. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to move it and I need to go equidistant from each of these points because I need to find the bisector. So you can decide if you want to change your compass now, you can, or you can just leave it the same. If you change your compass now, you just have to make sure you keep it the same for when we do the next point. So I'm just going to leave my compass exactly the same. I'm going to draw an arc. And then I'm going to go to this other point, and I need to keep the compass the same as the last measurement. Draw an arc. And then where those angle or where those arcs intersect, that's going to be my angle bisector. So it's going to go from the vertex through that intersection. So there's your angle bisector. And then it says label our parts when we're done. So I can go ahead and I can say that this part is congruent to that part because we had a bisector, which implies two congruent parts. So that's it. So I drew an arc, and then I went equidistant from those um, two points of intersection between the arc and the rays. Because bisect, you want to be the same distance away. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it on a triangle. So again, this is where you might want to use your colored pencils to kind of swap um, out your pencil so it's easier to see because you're going to have a lot of different arcs going on. So I'm going to start with this angle here. 
So that means it doesn't matter which angle you start with, up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw my arc. Remember, it doesn't have to be, there's no specific way it needs to be. I wouldn't make it so small, I wouldn't make it too big, because then it's just going to make it a little bit more difficult to use. So probably in here is decent. I could have probably went a little bit smaller with it. But once I get that arc, I'm going to go from those intersection points. You can decide to keep your compass the same or you can change the opening here. But whatever opening I pick right now, I have to make sure that I stay the same for the next arc. So this arc here, I have to have that same opening. So there's my first angle bisector. So I'm going to color code this. So going from here through that intersection. Now let's switch this up and go to this angle on this side. So I'm going to go ahead, place my compass on the point, on the vertex of the angle, draw my arcs. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that they don't intersect as much. Draw my arc, go from those intersection points, and go equidistant. So again, you can change the compass opening here. But then when I move to this next point, I have to keep that compass opening the same because I have to go equidistant from those two endpoints. So now I can draw in my um, bisector, my ray, which is going to go from the vertex through that intersection of the arcs. And last one, again, you can turn your paper sideways if it helps you to see these, because sometimes it's, when you're doing them upside down, it's a little bit more challenging. So if you need to, turn your paper upside down or turn it sideways so that the angle is facing one, like to the left or something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my arc and then move my compass and copy that distance. Same thing, go to the other side, and get that compass out of the way, and go ahead and draw my final ray, which is my angle bisector. So through the vertex, and you should see that yours are intersecting. Mine look a little off, but it might just be one of my um, lines here, or my rays is a little off. When I did this, I think right here it's a little off, that intersection. So then you can see that the three angle bisectors are intersecting at a common point, which will happen as well. But for right now, we're more concerned with um, the angle bisectors. And then it says label the congruent parts. So that means these are congruent, these angles are congruent, and then these angles, these parts are congruent as well. So those are your two different bisectors. So just remember, perpendicular bisector is anytime you want to bisect a segment. So even if it just says bisect, you go ahead and you do more. You make it perpendicular as well. If it said perpendicular bisector, well then obviously yes, you have to do the perpendicular bisector. Also, if it says find all points equidistant from two endpoints, that means the perpendicular bisector as well. And then for angle bisector, you're always going to do the arc so that you can figure out where to go equidistant from. you got to get those two points so that you can go equidistant from those. So go ahead and try the Check Your Understanding page, and then we will talk about those tomorrow.